If I asked you to name a well-known artifact from Japanese history, you might say something like a suit of samurai armor, or a katana, or maybe even the original Nintendo console. Enough time has certainly passed for it to be considered an artifact of the modern age. However, there is a particular Japanese artifact which I can almost guarantee you have seen at least once before, and would recognize almost immediately, even though you might not know what it is called. I am of course referring to Dogu, the enigmatic clay figures produced by the Jomon culture of prehistoric Japan. If you have come across an image of a Dogu in the past, I am also pretty sure that it was this exact figure that you saw. This captivating lady on the screen is known as the Shakoki Dogu, or Goggleite Dogu, due to its eyes resembling the protective sun goggles worn by the indigenous peoples in North America. This particular figure was made towards the end of the Jomon era, and is generally what people would have in mind when referring to Dogu. It certainly commands one's attention, with its dramatic appearance and simplified yet exaggerated features. I had the pleasure of seeing this artifact in person at the Tokyo National Museum during one of my travels to Japan in 2017. Seeing this dogu and its cousins also on display had a profound effect on me and triggered my desire to study and someday work within the field of Japanese history and archaeology. When viewing such an object, there are certain questions that would occur to us, such as what was its purpose? Why does it take this particular shape and form? And what does the object tell us about its creators, and in turn about us, the modern viewer, through our interactions with it? To answer such questions, we will start with the most basic, that being, what is a dogu? Dogu simply means clay figure. More specifically, these figures were made out of unglazed clay, although later examples did utilize glazed coatings. Hailing from the Jomon era of Japan, which spanned from circa 14,000 to 300 BC, the figures were produced only during the later phases of the Jomon culture, between 2500 to 300 BC. Dogu were produced in significant numbers throughout their period of use, with one estimate from the National Museum of Japanese History placing the total number of Dogu in Japan at 15,000, with other estimates increasing the total to 18,000. Dogu are relatively small figures, standing between 10 to 30 centimetres tall on average, though larger examples have been found, such as the Nishinomaya goddess, standing at 45 centimetres tall and found in 47 pieces in 1992 on the left bank of the Mogami Oguni River in Yamagata Prefecture. She is the largest and heaviest dogu found in Japan so far. Dogu were produced across the Japanese archipelago, excluding Okinawa and Kyushu, apart from some rare finds dating from the terminal phases of the Jomon era. The majority were produced in eastern Japan, in the regions of Kinki, Kanto, and all the way to the far northern regions of Tohoku, where our friend, the Shokoki Dogu, was found in the Kamikaoka archaeological site in Sugaru City, Aomori Prefecture. The timeline of use can be reliably charted, with production and distribution of Dogu peaking around 1500 BC. Towards the end of the Middle German period, Dogu almost entirely disappeared from the aforementioned centres of their production and use, extending from the Kinki Chubu regions of central Japan up to Hokkaido, except for the Tohoku region where the figures continued in use. We can tell from the archaeology that this period was a time of collapse. Settlement numbers sharply declined from their peak in the middle Jomon. Interestingly, there was a brief resurgence of Dogu usage in the Kinki Chubu Kanto regions during the final Jomon period, circa 1000 to 300 BC. Dogu then completely disappear from the archaeological record from this point, moving into the Yayoi period, circa 300 BC to 250 AD which coincides with the development of a new culture under the first Japanese state, the Yamato Kingdom. There isn't as much to say about the manufacture of Dogu, which is quite straightforward and not at all dissimilar to most types of ritualistic clay figures. Dogu were moulded by hand, and tools were used to incise the details on the figures, prior to firing in a kiln. The production techniques varied regionally and chronologically. Some Dogu were found to have been fired over open fires rather than a kiln. Accounting for these variances in production, the process was still relatively standardised across Japan. Just like other ancient figures found globally, such as the Cycladic idols of Bronze Age Greece, the visually diverse and at first seemingly unrelated variety of dogu figures are grouped into types, such as our friend, the Shakoki dogu, belonging to the Kamiga Oka type, which is widely considered as the pinnacle of dogu design. Each typology is grouped via shared characteristics and find locations. Outside of these specific typologies, all dogu share certain features which classify them as being dogu. These are a clearly discernible face with eyes, mouth, nose, and ears. 
Heads containing either a mask or headdress. Dogu can be further categorized between mask and non-mask types. Highly stylized limbs that are either simplified or over-exaggerated. Body decoration patterns, which likely indicates clothing. Other body features, either pronounced or subtly suggested, such as breasts, wide hips, genitalia, and swollen stomachs, all together indicating a feminine form and suggestive of reproduction. It should also be noted that some rare examples have been excavated with different body types that are believed to be depicting males. I mentioned earlier about the shock cocky dog's eyes resembling protective eye goggles. This is an outdated comparison, and more recent scholarship indicates that the figure's eyes are intentionally exaggerated to express an importance of the eyes as vessels of transference within the beliefs of the late Jomon religion. While dogus still present somewhat of a mystery as to their intended functions, there are still many diverging theories as to the purposes behind the use of these figures. These theories range from the academic to the fringe. There are too many to account for, so I will discuss the main ones held in archaeological and historical consensus here. Since most dogu depict the human body in a feminine form related to reproduction, this leads to our first theory, that they were used as objects to pray for fertility and the safe delivery of a child during birth, comparable to the Venus figures of Neolithic Europe. Most dogu excavated so far were found to be damaged, not just through the process of being discarded and worn down by time, but intentionally. The majority seem to have been broken in specific sections on purpose, one recurring theme is that many of the figures had one of its legs intentionally broken. As such, it is also theorized that another purpose of dogu is that they were created for the exercising of illness or injury to the human body in a ritualistic manner. Compared with the first theory, this could indicate an all-purpose use of dogu in warding off general physical misfortune to humans. Dogu were intentionally destroyed to pray for the recovery of ailments. The scattering of the figurines in the ground after crushing them into pieces could represent a ritual prayer for fertility. These theories are supported by the archaeology, as the remains are often found discarded in communal dumps, indicating that they were intentionally destroyed and then thrown away with their intended use having been fulfilled. There are additional theories of use, such as figures being idols of gods, goddesses and spirits, acting as objects of worship towards those beings, and functioning as protective talismans within the context of the belief system of the Jomon people. Some dogu were specifically intended to be displayed in a prominent location for many people to view. Others were found in contexts indicating more personalized use by an individual. Animal-shaped dogu have also been found in excavations, specifically in eastern Japan, from the late to the final Jomon periods, and include examples such as monkeys, dogs, boars, bears, birds, turtles, and even insects. Another interesting theory is that the line engravings found on dogu could be evidence that the people of prehistoric Japan practiced tattoo engraving, a tradition which carried on with the Ainu people of Hokkaido, who are believed to be the last living descendants of the Jomon culture. Interestingly, line engravings are also present on the Haniwa clay figures of the later Kofun period, circa 250 to 650 AD, possibly indicating that tattoo use may have continued well into the formation of the early Japanese state. After the close of the Jomon era, dogu largely remained forgotten from the public consciousness in Japan, apart from the occasional incidental find of a dogu, which would invariably find its way into the possession of Japanese antiquarians throughout the 17th to 19th centuries. Largely seen at the time as little more than curiosities from a non-Japanese indigenous culture, it wasn't until the modern era, post-World War II, that dogu started to attract serious and concentrated attention from both academia and the public with the figures coming to be correctly understood within the context of belonging to Japanese history as a product of a prehistoric Japanese culture. Since the mid-20th century, public interaction with dogu has continuously increased in broad and creative forms. Depictions of dogu in popular culture are common, with the figures being used as themes or props in popular media, ranging from anime and manga to video games, cosplay and collectible items, even taking the form of mascots for local museums. Dogu have become a popular means for modern Japan to engage with its rich prehistoric past, with particular figures being celebrated and incorporated into the physical and cultural landscape of the local communities where they were found. One prominent example is the Kizukuri train station in Sugaru, where the Shakoki Dogu was discovered. In this way, Dogu transcend their original purpose, continuing their service in a new form, that of a communal historical artifact for communities across Japan to connect with their ancient past. Unfortunately, not all modern interpretations of dogu are accurate, and some can be intentionally misleading and harmful. 
Anyone familiar with the pseudo-historical ancient astronauts hypothesis, and I use that term very generously, would be aware of the gross misinterpretation of the goggle-eyed dogu type as being evidence for ancient contact with extraterrestrial visitors. This pseudo-historical claim about dogu was largely popularized by Eric von Daniken in his book Chariots of the Gods, a rambling tome filled with shoddy research and outright lies. Daniken argues, based on nothing other than pareidolia caused misinterpretation, that goggle-eyed dogu represent extraterrestrial astronauts in spacesuits. Such obviously absurd claims, despite being insane from purely casual observation, completely ignore the archaeological context and wealth of evidence surrounding these figures. Much of the pseudo-historical misinterpretation of Dogu can be traced back to the height of the UFO craze in the 20th century. Shows like Ancient Aliens and Daniken's books that promote the idea of extraterrestrial influence on ancient cultures have often used Dogu as visual evidence to fit their narrative. These misinterpretations have little basis in reality or archaeological context, but have nonetheless unfortunately influenced public perceptions. Within this narrative, Dogu have been incorrectly reframed as artifacts of alien encounters to appeal to popular fascination with UFOs. This ancient astronaut hypothesis is easily debunked when considering that the exaggerated features of Dogu can be understood within the context of Jomon's spiritual belief and ritual practice. The figures represent symbolic interpretations of spiritual entities, not extraterrestrial beings. The ritualistic significance of Dogu is well supported by the contexts in which they have been found, such as burial sites and middens, and by comparisons with other prehistoric art forms and the sheer volume of these figures produced over more than two millennia. As we have seen, Dogu provide a fascinating glimpse into the spiritual and cultural life of the ancient Jomon people. These enigmatic clay figures, which exude a charismatic and ritualistic aura, serve as a direct connection to the mists of prehistoric Japan, highlighting the complex expression of the Jomon people's spiritual beliefs. It is no surprise as to why these captivating figures continue to capture the imagination of modern Japan, and in turn, continue to live on in new forms of use. Let me know your thoughts regarding Dogu in the comments. I would love to know if you have had the privilege of seeing one in person, and the effect it had on your interpretation of the figures.